when President Trump announced that he was slashing refugee admissions to the United States to 45,000 the lowest in decades. The first person I thought about was 18-year-old Rokhaye Muhammad. I met Rokhaye in 2007 when Syria wasn't the war-torn place we know today. It was a haven for more than a million Iraqi refugees, largely the professional class, who had fled the aftermath of the U.S. invasion of Iraq. That was the war that gave the world ISIS, whose leadership met in the mid-2000s. In a American-run prison in Iraq called Camp Buka, the only place on the planet where Islamic radicals could spend limitless time conspiring with secular expothists and destabilize the entire region in ways that are far from over. Back then Rakhaya was a precocious green-eyed nine-year-old living with her parents and older brother in Damascus. Her mother, Alam, a fixer for foreign correspondence, was my translator and friend. Donald Trump caps refugee admissions in 2018 to historic low red Morokaya was five when the war came to their village near Baghdad. She remembers how, overnight, a happy childhood surrounded by a loving family was supplanted by tanks, helicopters, American soldiers, fear. Her mother worked as a translator for the Wall Street Journal and later for the U.S. Civil Military Affairs, which made her a target of militias. After being kidnapped and ransomed, Alam fled with the family to Syria. It would be another three years, and a whole other story, before they were resettled in the U.S. When she arrived in Chicago in 2008, age 10, Rokaya knew only four words in English, yes, no, grandmother, and fish. But in the North, Chicago neighborhood where the family landed, she swiftly made friends. None shared a mother tongue, so English was their lingua franca. Within a year she was fluent, and I could no longer converse with her mother without Brokaya understanding every word.